Hi there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com. Here with kind of a different video for Friday. Usually I do deck techs on Friday, gonna switch things up and do another market related video, just cause I wanna show people that they can actually uh, invest in cards successfully without any sort of paywall or uh, any sort of program or app or something to give you an edge. Um, I've basically, my entire finance life has been done just by uh, knowledge, not by any sort of, um, again, service or app or, or th there are some things that can give an edge. Um, basically all of these sites, Goldfish, MG Price, MG Stocks, Quiet Speculation, all of those have their little paywall of where you can like, you can, you can, uh, sign up for like better service to get these, uh, data, like, per, like more in-depth data to make decisions on. And I've never really found any of those really necessary to speculate on cards. So I'm going to show you how I have been looking at the market, especially popper and been able to get ahead of cards before they pop. Now there are a few cards that are about ready to pop. What I mean by pop is where they go to at where the, the demand becomes where, what do we call it? The, 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 uh, and I can't think of the word where it comes where the demand finally outstretches the supply, hits that sweet spot, and then the prices just spike out of control. So I uh, was able to identify this needle drop with, with Chomano's Blessing with the, uh, what was the other one we did um, recently? And the other specs that I did make too, like Gorilla Shaman, were just, I just knew eventually those. I bought way before they were on the, the critical edge of popping so but chomano's blessing and needle drop i just those ones were ones we identified they they didn't have a lot of supply out there in the vendor uh sphere and the buy lists were starting to creep up and then you can check the different vendors to see exactly what their supply is and then check back in a few hours to see how much it's it's gone down and then you can make like an educated guess about okay is this a good time to get into these cards uh, because one of the things with like the cards that do end up having this this massive demand that also outstretches the supply, what we call a buyout. Um, what ends up happening is their highest price point will usually be right after that buyout. So you want to sell when that does hit that huge spike price. So the, I mean, Gorilla Shamans are great. Some of these other cards that we've invested in that have just been continually going up, they have some great opportunities to sell uh, down the road. But I like these ones because they're a quick, they're a quick buck. Uh, so like the Chimana's Blessings, we were selling the playsets for 20 a piece. We bought in for very, very low. So I'm just going to show you a little bit of my history so far. I've been buying into Popper. I think I've spent around 600. Again, I explained that this is the first time we've had some free, uh, not free. We've had some, we've had some, uh, some funds to actually do this. I've never been someone that's been able to practice what I preached, uh, kicking myself again for not buying into as many Bedlam Revelers. I should have, I knew that card was going to go somewhere and I just, I, all my money was in popper at this point, but I've been doing the market money for a long time. And I think I have a track record of making some pretty sweet picks, uh, for investments. And, but unfortunately I've never, I have never really invested much. Um, again, I'm in a unique position with the store. Sometimes it's be just better to use our buy list. You know, we usually get cards about 25% of their value because we do, you know, in-store credit, which we mark up our, our products usually around 50%. So you, you can think that we get cards for about 25% of what uh, the market value of a card is. So a lot of times that's better than trying to go to the internet and compete with everyone else that's trying to do MTG finance. So anyway, um, the the first tip I, I actually want to show you though is how to add on packages. So this is a perfect example right here with this kitchen table. So this had free shipping. These are the these are the perfect type of um, sellers that I like to find with free shipping because then you don't have to get the the fee of having shipped to you. So I'm, I was trying to buy out Deathblade Elites. Uh, seven times eleven is only seventy seven cents. So that doesn't get you above the two dollar package that you have to do for TC player. So this is where I add on the frog mites, the Burgler Rangers, the vault, the, like the vaults, the, all these other just popper staples that I know eventually will uh, go up in value. And that way I can, I can, I, this is what, this is like paying for the shipping here for these type of, of, of vendors. So I highly, highly suggest doing this. If, I mean, this is kind of like the scattershot approach just investing in the format in general rather than a card to get cards that are just about ready to to pop. So Deathblade Elite is is one of those that's right on the verge of having a a, a huge pi price spike, and I'll try to prove that uh, here in a second. But we'll just go down my 
uh, some of the cards that I've been I've been targeting. So Deathblade Elite, I would ignore these ones. Bursal Rangers I have been targeting, by the way, but Frogmite I have not. Frogmite was just to get this above the shipping price. Same thing with these Witches and the the Vault. No, I just added these onto the package because the shipping was so so high that I'm like, oh, I might as well throw throw on some other uh, uh, throw ons for it. Uh, Martyr of Ashes is one that I've been targeting, but this was kind of more, more of the Gorilla Shaman approach. I just know that Martyr eventually will go up. It is by no means close uh, to popping. Uh, there's just tons of supply. The whole reason I've been investing in it is this little word here, cold snap. There's not a lot of supply of cold, cold snap out there. Uh, we're probably thinking between three and four million copies total uh, out there. And then just, you know, so many of these cards just got destroyed. And um, it's kind of like the the attrition, I guess we call of commons, where they get they they get so damaged in like the vast majority of commons end up being moderately played to heavy played. There's very few that stay in this lightly played uh, or near mint. Uh, rares and mythics and especially foils are the ones that people actually take care of and so the the attrition just happens to these these commons and they just completely uh, uh, the, the 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 massive supply of them the four or five million the in the millions definitely per set uh, gets after about three four five six ten years like martyr of ash martyr of ashes goes significantly down we're talking i would say over 50 percent of the copies of martyr of ashes are are pretty much at the bottom of the sea at this point so and that's why I do like commons, and that's why I, I love this popper format, because people are, are a little bit misguided of, of just the supply that's out there. And for a good example, you can look at cards in modern that have been commons before, that have had massive price spikes, Manamorphos, uh, uh, Street Wraith, things like that. Alrighty, so same thing with this package. I think this package was just me trying to get a few cards here. I, what was I trying to get in this pack? I think it was Choke. Oh, yep, yeah, nope, nope, right there. Deathblade Elites, again, had to make it worthwhile, the shipping, and added on these other, just a bunch of other popper cards uh, to make the shipping worthwhile. And same thing, Deathblade Elites here, had to add on a bunch of other stuff just to make it, make it worthwhile. Uh, for my time. So uh, Martyr Vash is one that I've gone all out on, Deathblade Elite. I've tried to. There's just not a lot of, of supply out there. That's one of the reasons why I think it's going to go up. The Birch Lores, the Diabolical Edict's another one. And I'm, I'm keeping my eye on cards like the Carapace and the Glint Hawk. Scars of Mirrodin's a little bit too early for me, but it's you never know. Um, we've seen cards even, even more recently printed than these go up uh, a lot in value. So Keep your eye on 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 these top. I I tend not to like anything post Ravnica forward. Like Return to Ravnica forward, the supply of that is just insane uh, for how many cards are out there. Here's another good example. This this person was able to buy the 14 and then just add on a Piracy Charm and a Double Cleave just to make it over the the two dollar mark. And I think this one is Deathblade Elite. Same thing here. Had to put it over the two dollar mark. So just put kind of these. Uh, a prospect or a sled or a rouse or a rally and an, an Araflux to get it above and some more Deathblade Elites. Um, I have been targeting Spire Golem, but Spire Golem is kind of awkward. I think that, that there's a ton of supply out there, but this is a card that I'm definitely watching. I am, I am watching the supply and then we'll, we'll show you how to do that in a second. So um, yep, and this is starting to get kind of the older stuff. I think this was another package that I was trying to get Deathblade Elites, and then also Salvate the Renegades on here. So it's like, woohoo, two for one here. These are two cards I'm specking into. Uh, so therefore I can I can buy out. Uh Dust to Dust, another card that I'm I'm definitely looking at because it started to show up in a lot of lists for the Mono White Heroics way to combat affinity. It basically says exile two artifacts for three mana, and it's out of the dark, and I believe sixth edition. I think it's 6th edition or 5th edition is the only printings this card has had. So this is another one I'm watching. And same thing with this package. I just had to, you know, put some things here to make the package worthwhile. Land Grant's another card that I have been focusing on. Here's 79 cards purchased in Land Grant. Uh, another 29 here. And, yep, yeah, Choking Sands. I Yep, yeah, Choking Sands is one I'm, I'm, I'm starting to buy out too in Diabolical Edict. Edict is being the budget choice for Chainer's Edict. And I actually like Diabolical Edict slightly better in some situations because the instant speed versus sorcery speed is huge. I know that Chainers has the ability to flash it back for seven, but there's actually few decks, just the model black control that actually wants Chainers Edict because you're never going to get to seven in a lot of these decks that only run 18 lands. I mean, it's very unfeasible to get to that point. So a card like Diabolical Edict at instant speed is just as, as impactful. Um, and then you can see this one was just kind of a scatter shot to try to get some cheap land grants in here and Deathblade Elites. So that's kind of my history of what I've been um, investing in, um, you know, I try to stay as transparent as possible 
on this channel and I definitely am putting my money where my mouth is. Okay, so now on to the purpose of this video, the education portion of how uh, how I was able to identify like the Chomano's blessings. So you can see I got in for like 20 cents here, got in for flaring pains. I think this was the, the previous week where I was trying to buy out the Chomano's and then just had to add on a bunch of cards. So um, a lot of these, again, these vendors, it's hard to get up to that package where it's worthwhile for shipping. You don't want to just buy uh, $2 worth of cards and then spend $1.09 for shipping. So you want to get around the $10 range and that's where you scattershot in a bunch of other cards that you just think will go up in the long term. Um, and one of the ways to do that, for example, is to come over here and click on the vendor and then shop from the seller. And you can see that a lot of times these, these particular sellers will have a lot of cards under market price. So 12 cents compared to 18 cents, uh, 20 cents compared to 24, 40 cents compared to 57. So these are the good ones to add on because even if you have to turn them, a lot of times you can still make a slight profit or break even on, re on turning them back into um, you know, liquid capital to invest in. So, uh, so look, land grant 35 cents for towards 41 cents. I buy from this white lion games a lot. However, I'm not going to say a lot of good things about this vendor. That's why the, the ratings 98.70. I think I, I gave neutral ratings here uh, to them because they are the worst at a lot of the cards I've been receiving are actually heavy played, not lightly played for them. So, so shame on them. Shame, shame, shame. Uh, but anyway, you can just go through and the cool thing about TCG player is it automatically does sort by best selling. That's showing, that's giving you data right there. That's telling you that TCG player is selling these cards. So you can get above trends right off the bat. In fact, you can click over here if you just want popper and to just go exclusively commons and it can show you the faith of saluting is their most sold, at least what this vendor has. Uh, followed by Cartouche of Solidarity, followed by Electricery. So these cards are on the uptick, which is funny with Electricery. The supply of this is massive. Uh, but Land Land Grant is highly sold. Cartouche of Knowledge, Sacred Cat, Burning Inquiry. So it seems like Popper, Standard, and Modern are pretty much uh, even with sales right now as far as the commons are concerned. Ethereal Armor, Team of Battle Rage, Grey Merchant of Asphodel. All of these cards are starting to have a lot of, of movement. Hey, look, there's some Death, Death Blade Elites. I'm going to actually probably try to add these to my cart um yeah see if i can make a package uh from i thought we saw uh, land grants are still something i'm also speculating in so let's go over to the land grant and add it to my cart as well uh because i believe yep 35 cents is still a decent price for the land grant um, which is funny about Land Grant while I'm on the topic. A lot of these cards that have existed, uh, what I mean by existed in, in competitive play, are actually a lot cheaper. Even though, look, if you look at Chomano's Blessing and Land Grant, I would say Land Grant sees as much play as Chomano's Blessing. Uh, it's, it's pick your poison, elves or mono white heroic. So I think there's as many elf decks that are running Land Grant out there as there are, you know, uh, white decks running Chomano's Blessing. Now, not all elf decks run Land Grant, but the vast majority do because it, it helps you not hit lands from your lead the stampedes. You only really need one land to get going. Or like something they, they do is you go turn one, play a land, and then you have Land Grant in your hand. Then you just cast Land Grant to go get an, another uh, land. So, and is this instant speed? Because it's instant speed, no, it's sorcery. You could stack them, but I guess it's not. So uh, anyway, where was I going with this? So the, what's funny though is Landgrant's been played in Legacy for quite some time. So these never ended up rotting in bulk bins. These were already sorted out because they did have demand from uh, a format, which is funny where Chomano's Blessing just goes nuts because those are all, like I said, at the bottom of the sea where land grants were sorted out. And you see that with many cards that actually have more play right now in popper but are slower to move another good example is like well ethereal armor is out of there or yeah out of theros so it's going to take for Ravnica. that's going to take forever for this card to go up but um these cards never were like rotting in bulk bins same thing with grave merchant or team or battle rage so just some food for thought i'm not going to bore you guys and, and go over uh versatile range 49 cents a little bit too high for me up oh, there's a good one diabolic edict at I think I'm above their package rate, but you know, I'd want to make this worthwhile. Uh, I'll come back to this. So anyway, uh, the cards I've been watching that I think are about ready to pop, Deathblade Elites there, Chittering Rats is starting to get there, and then Land Grant is almost there. Now, the best tool for this is the MTG Goldfish because it shows you the buy list of uh, two of the biggest players in this market. 
and one of them being Card Kingdom, the other one Abu Games, and then we'll look at MTG Price to find where the other supply is, and then I just come over, since Star City Games doesn't let anyone crawl their site, you just have to manually type it into Star City Games to see what their supply is at, and then you can go over to like Cool Stuff Inc. or Troll and Toad or... Uh, what are some other big vendors that are in, you know, and just start looking at their supply and you can kind of see where their supply is at and then to make that guess if it's about ready to go. So let's look at Deathblade Elite. This is a card that last night was, um, Deathblade, come on, there we go, was in my opinion ready to go. The buy list price for Card Kingdom is still eight cents, but sometimes MC Goldfish is a little bit slow to get going. So you can click over here to the card kingdom and you can see out of stock out of stock out of stock the last ones with needle drop with chomano's blessing this is exactly what happened card kingdom was out of out of stock you go to their cell uh now they are getting still eight cents for it so they haven't updated their 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 sell price to it so you can come over here to empty price and say okay let's go over here and see if there's any other uh vendors that have any significant amount of stock of the Deathblade Elite. So Deathblade Elite over here. Uh, again, a lot of these you just have to manually click on because they are behind. So we'll click on Channel Fireball. Uh, we'll click on Troll and Toad. Uh, and then we'll go over to Star City Games here and we'll type in Deathblade Elite. So Deathblade Elite over at Star City Games. Last night was out of stock. Tonight it is still out of stock. The foils, the funny thing about this, they had a lot more foils uh, here, which was which is crazy because the, the spread of the foils is very, very low. Um, and yep, they're out of stock. So we have out of stock. There are 14 available over here at uh, Troll and Toad. That's very insignificant at 30 cents a piece. Um, if I shop from Troll and Toad, maybe I'd buy them out right now. Um, and, you know, that's exactly how uh, you just, you can come over here. We can click on like cool stuff. Looks like cool stuff is also going to be out of stock. Yep, out of stock at cool stuff. Um, yep. And they you were even out of stock at the 49 cents. So people have been buying them up to the 49 cent uh, range. So this, in my opinion, is right, is, is ripe, is, is going to be uh, bought out. And one of the main reasons for this is that it is now starting to see a lot of play in Modern White Heroic. I tested it out. It is so much better than running like Wingsteed Rider. I've seen people run. I've also seen people run like the Sacred Cat in this slot. Um, I've seen the other one that gives first strike to anything with plus one, plus one counters. All of those I think are bad in this slot. Deathblade Elite in certain matchups is insanely good. It has Provoke and then two mana prevent all combat damage that will be dealt to and dealt by Deathblade Elite. Don't worry about that. It's the Provoke. When this creature attacks, you may have target creature defending player controls untap it and block it. This against like Burn, you can make the, the uh, Thermal Alchemist, I believe. I believe they can't tap it in response and then block because it has to block. It's still, I can't remember, but it at least can get rid of fire, firebrand archers and other cards that are like the, the, the ninjas. You, a lot of these cards you can just, that are being a problem or being a pain, the death blade that can kill because you can throw the Chomano's blessing or the hyena or the ethereal armor on it. And it's going to make them block, kill them. And it becomes your creature removal source. So it's just, this is just a really, really potent card. Look down here. We have dust to dust and holy light down here. Uh, these are cards that I am I'm watching closely and probably going to start trying to buy out dust to dust, dust, to dust. Uh, because anything that has significant sideboard play that's from a very very low set, uh, I think is 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 just going to be naturally going to go up uh, in value. Uh, Death speakers for a little bit I'm looking at too. I think it was in Homelands in fifth edition as well. Um, some of these cards just have very very low supply out there. Uh, remember these cards are like 15 20 years old, so. <laughs> just think of a car that's 15, 20 years old. They're going to, of course, suffer from that attrition, suffer from all those cards just being uh, destroyed. Uh, like every day, another one of these cards gets coffee spilled on them, and there's one less out of the supply chain. All right, so I really like Deathblade Elite for that reason. Um, you want to be glued to this, the format staples of Popper, uh, because it shows you a lot of trends, like Hydroblast is actually undervalued compared to Pyroblast. Hydroblast seems a little more play in more decks, 50% compared to 34, yet this one is the more expensive card. It also shows you that, you know, what cards have a ton of play overall. Looks like Delver is starting to take over the meta again. I'm sure that will shift. Uh, Popper does have that self-regulating meta where 
then popper decks will get big and then stompy will come to stompy and affinity will come to beat it up uh because those are the two decks elves as well that do very well against delver um delver actually has a lot of bad matchups i'd even say burn is really really tough for delver but anyway we're getting off topic here so you can of course view more and it will go up to top 50 you can also look at creatures um and look at the top 50 of creatures used and just start to see a little bit of these trends if we have so one of the reasons i like burst Lord rangers never been reprinted sees playing 10 percent of the decks that's called elves and has only had this onslaught printing again this is a legacy card it has seen play before in legacy and therefore this card didn't get like just thrown away in bulk bins so keep that in mind uh, when investing in cards like burst Lord ranger and land grant uh or like cards in like brainstorm people these are known cards that were were sorted through we're not just thrown away Okay, so let's go back to a few of the other cards that I think are going to pop. I think Chittering Rats was here. Um, Chittering Rats is a card that has been trending upwards. And if we go over to the usual suspects again, we can come over here to the card kingdom. And we can see that they have four of the EX exceptional. I love their dumb little very good, good. So this is like good good means that you can actually play it without getting disqualified but this means that it's it's like crapped up very good is like heavy played and excellent is lightly played and near mint is near mint i, I just they're i just love their dumb little the ways that they they change it over but you can see they've already upped the price to 99 cents for chitting rats and they are out of stock in the uh near mint uh, and then you can, are they out of stock for disfigure? Wow. That's another thing is then you can scroll through and usually when they're out of stock, that means card kingdom's going to, uh, they're going to up their buy list. I believe they have a pretty, yeah, they have a very aggressive buy list. Look at the spread 51 cents compared to 50 cents. So people are just going to start, you know, buy listing it over to card kingdom and throwing it that way. So we can also click on channel fireball and it will show that channel fireball is offering, uh, 10 cents for them. Because I believe Channel Fireball is out of stock for Chittering Rats as well. So we can go over to Chittering Rats and see if they have any in stock. Request item, request item. They are out of stock for Chittering Rats. Now we can go over to the MTG price and type in Chittering Rats. And come over here and Chittering Rats is... Uh, let's go over to Cool Stuff. Cool Stuff is out of stock for chittering rats yep okay let's go over to star city games and see where the chittering rats are currently at we have chittering rats at 92 so star city games oh, that okay this is a refill because star city games had them at 49 cents they had them at 92 so this is a number you want to kind of get uh associated with this number so in a couple hours you'd come back and check to see how many copies of star city games still has at 92 and 99 and then you uh, uh you can you can kind of make a a, a calendar or a trajectory of where this is going to be sold out to where that star city games is going to have to uplist its buy list and restock into this now little thing about star city games as well is they're making a move on popper it's the 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 channel fireball star city games feud is getting really really crazy so i believe that star city games just just sponsored to learn community college to come to a bunch of their events too <laughs> so this is getting hilarious um how they just you know star city games does a little bit of insider here star city games is a little bit ticked off at wizards right now there is a lot of bad blood between channel fireball star city games and wizards of the coast because wizards of the coast has basically turned their back on star city games this 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 feud has been going on for years when Star City Games started doing their open series. And I believe it really came to a, you know, a pinnacle, a, a, a boiling point when the Star City Open, um, there was a GP and a Star City Open scheduled the same week. And the Star City Open, like, 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 uh, and it was in the uh, ge geographically kind of this, the same area. And a lot of pros decided to go to the Star City Open because they felt like Star City was, was creating a better tournament environment than Wiz of the Coast. It's actually the turning point to make Wiz of the Coast actually start running their Grand Prix better rather than just saying everyone show up and we'll play Magic where they'd have to actually promote it and stuff like that because they were worried that Star City Games was going to take over their share of you know, the tournament scene, their coverage was better, their planning was better, their promotion was better, everything about it was better. And so I think that ever since then, and now that, that Wizards has given Channel Fireball exclusive rights to Grand Prix in the United States, uh, Star City Games has been pissed about this. So they're going to make some moves trying to uh, keep their share. Another thing is we have this pesky card kingdom that has really made a move. You can, I think that I, I would love to see the price data to see who is outselling who. Uh, Card Kingdom versus uh, 
uh, uh, Star City Games because Star City Games is still they're really focused on this pro like Jerry Thomas Thompson, Sam Black, Brad Nielsen, Todd Anderson, Todd Stevens. So pro, 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 pro. However, you come over here to Card Kingdom, and their articles, their uh, do they even do articles or anything? Blog, maybe? <laughs> I don't know what they do. But the, a lot of the people that they've sponsored, Magic Man Sam, casual. Uh, Tony Community College, casual. Uh, EDH Rec, casual. Uh, Command, I believe the Command Cast, right? Casual. Everything with them, they've, they've really made on this casual market. And it's really starting to drive them traffic. Uh, EDH Rec especially has that kind of exclusive uh, with the Card Kingdom, we even and the MC Goldfish. This used to actually show a lot of other stuff here. Now look at just purchase price. The only thing you see is TCG and Card Kingdom. Uh, so this is, means that MC Goldfish has made a deal that Card Kingdom is the only one that showed up. This used to show a lot more. The buy list, they'll still show some other buy lists. Abu Games and Channel Fireball. So I wonder if they was able to keep their their deal here with them. Because I'm sure this is how MC Goldfish operates, is they get a cut. Whenever you click on this, is there a referral? So you go down here at the bottom, and it says, Card Kingdom Dark Steel Chittering is partner, MTG Goldfish partner. Uh, so this little tag in the script that if I click on here and then buy Chittering Rats or sell Chittering Rats, I'm sure that MC Goldfish gets a cut. Same thing with TCG Player. Uh, there is a little referral. It does look like MC Traders doesn't have one, but... Card Hoarder does have an MG Goldfish uh, one as well. So if you buy from MGO Traders, they do as well. They have a referral code. So referral, referral. Yeah. So so MG Goldfish has got more exclusivity. Kind of disappointed by that because I used to like it when MG Goldfish was uh, had a lot more data, kind of like the MG price. However, I understand it. You know, they this MG Goldfish is, has insane traffic. They might as well capitalize it uh, the best they can. And smart business plan too they actually don't sell anything they get the revenue streams by other vendors uh giving them a cut for um i've thought about doing that with rogue deck builder i think i still want to be my own vendor a uh, little bit of a uh, announcement too right there i'm gonna start selling popper decks package so we're gonna do decks uh sleeves and a deck box or you can just add on a deck box and sleeves and you can get a popper deck for uh, market price or probably a little bit low, below market price for the entire thing. So if you're looking for a popper deck, I'm going to start selling them just because I've invested so much. It's just, it's been my end game of, of doing so. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I'm, I'm starting to get some strategic partners for Rogue Deck Builder and I'm going to make a move uh, to monetize the website. So hopefully you'll, you'll see me become less lazy and actually more focused on getting that done. Alrighty. So uh, where were we on Chittering Rats? So that's why I like Chittering Rats. Um, there was another one. I believe it's Burstler Ranger. Still does have a lot of supply out there. Let's look at Langer and Burstler Ranger. And then we'll be coming up on that 30 minute mark. You can see Burstler was starting to go up. It did have that dip again. Um, uh, down to 33 cents. Huh, they're mirrored on Empty Joe versus Paper. Uh, the Card Kingdom is, is spending 8 cents. Channel Fireball, Abu Games. Again, we might be able to click on some of those to see where they're at stock-wise. We have seven available at Near Mint and four available exceptional and out of stock on the rest of them. Uh, we can go over to Channel Fireball, see where they're at at Birch Lore Rangers. So this one has some time. Birch, Birch, Birch Lore Rangers. Um, this one has some time before it pops. Well, they're out of stock. Uh, besides the foil for Channel Fireball, man, this company, they knew Popper was coming. So uh, this kind of uh, debunks the theory of uh, uh, Unsleeved Media, that, that Channel Fireball. Uh, I think even Slayer and Community College stated that it was the saddest thing in the world. That Channel Fireball sponsored him to come out and people uh, sponsored him to come out, meet with people, start a Popper tournament. And Channel Fireball themselves didn't even bring Popper cards to sell. Durr. So there was a lot of people that wanted to actually play in the pop event, but couldn't even build the decks. I guess there was just like a free for all uh, with vendors that did bring popper cards and just sold a ton uh, to get people to play in these events. So those 300 man tournaments probably would have been a little bit higher if Channel Fireball would have come with decks prepared. It was funny that, that uh, TCC actually insulted them in his like review in his video of how the tournament went. So look at this. They're out of stock with this. They should have been buying this up. If they knew that they were going to promote a format, why the hell wouldn't you stockpile? It looks like the Star City Games did, at least before they announced that they were making a move. It looks like that they, because some of these were out of stock 
on Star City Games, and now you can see they're way high up. Okay, so this one had 88 last night, for example. I, I wrote down the number for Burstler Rangers. So from last night to this this morning, they have sold 12 copies of Burstler, because this was mirrored right here, 88 and 88, I believe. Or maybe it was, yeah, 84. I know it was at least above the 80s uh, for this. So they've, they've sold a significant amount of cards um, in just, you know, less than 24 hours for the Star City Games. Uh, again, we can click on the other usual suspects, come over here, see where cool stuff is at with Chittering Rats. They are out of stock and increase their price to 99 cents. Uh, we have uh, some of these other get ones like Abu Games that never ever pulls up because the site takes forever. They have one Chittering Rats at $1.34. So that is, uh, yep. This, this card, I think, is a good one. Uh, a couple other ones. I'm, I'm Spire Golem is another card that I have been targeting. Spire Golem here. And for very similar reasons, it's just been eking up. See, it's got the two dual decks, but those aren't very significant. Uh, this one has been eking up a little bit here. And the buy list price from Card Kingdom is now at $0.20. Cents. Card Kingdom sells it for $0.69. Cents. Um, Abu Games, Channel Fireball. We'll see where they're at. Uh, we have the, oops, you have to go over. I hate how they have like different things for each one of them. Search the uh, Golem, the Spire Golem. And we'll see where they're at with this. They have four from Dark Steel, eight from Dual Dex Anthology, and eight from Jace versus Chandra. So they have decent little stock. Um, of that, but still, usually they cap at 40. You can see that those have been cards have been selling. So, uh, then we channel Fireball. We'll see the Spire Buff or Spire Golem, not Spire Buff, Spire Golem. And nope, out of stock with the Spire Golem. So, this one's a good one again for the channel Fireball. Uh, Card Kingdom had, uh, let's see here, shop at Card Kingdom. Did we already look at? Card, oh yeah, we already looked at Card Kingdom. They have they've restocked. They have twenty available and twenty available. So they they're going to take a while before this one hits the the critical mass and they have to restock again. Okay, so let's go and look at Star City Games to see where they are on Spire Golem. And again, Dark Steel is a pretty good set to, to. They have three left. This was really significant last night. Yeah, this was really both of these were really significant. They have a lot of played though, so keep that in mind. And these have been sold. And the price is actually, yeah. So keep keep your eye on this one for sure. When this played uh, number goes down significantly, I think the Spargolm. We have time for this one. And the problem with Spargolm too is the TCG spread isn't that great. Like you can't really find a lot of these cards for the 10 cent mark was where I like to get in on them. Uh, last but not least though, we are going to look at Land, Land Grant, not Gant. Land Grant, Grant, Grant. Uh, land grant uh this one does look like it is starting to spike a lot of that of course was me so keep that in mind uh the buy list price for card kingdom is 16 cents uh we have the out of stock out of stock out of stock come over here to star city games land grant is out of stock this was not out of stock the other day uh come over to cool stuff or we'll go back over to cool we'll go over to mc price and look at land grant and see where we're at with land grant we have abu games looks like they're out of stock because you can't click on it uh card kingdom that's been updated they're out of stock uh cool stuff let's look at cool stuff see where they're at with cool stuff uh 19 left in play at 75 cents a piece i think that land grant is the is the one that we're we're looking at ready to ready to go here so that's again a little bit tips and tricks Long rambly video, I know, but hopefully this will help you in your speculation. You don't need to buy into any of these services or whatnot. Um, I don't know where I stand with with <laughs> I I did make that announcement. I think that that uh, quite speculation made an announcement once upon a time too that I'd be writing for them. It just for me with all the drama that happened and and you know, you know people at QS being quite diverse, I just didn't want to. I wanted the dust to settle before if they would reach out to me again. Uh, there hasn't been any communication back and forth. So I, I think that, that that deal is not on the table anymore, which kind of sucks. Uh, it would have been a pretty good writing gig, but um, I don't know. That just means I'll just put all the content that I would do 
uh, for them, not on a paywall. Like I don't feel very good about a paywall. I think the information should be free. And if people find the information helpful, that's where you give a tip. So again, if you find this helpful, I got a Patreon that I do tweet out uh, specific, like like before Deathblade Elite goes up, usually I'll tweet out like Flaring Pain. I did one. Um, I did one for Goblin, Sh uh, Gorilla Shaman. I tweeted or I, I put a post on Patreon saying, hey, if anyone wants to get on this, it's about ready to pop. And I've done that before for various things. Uh, so that's one of the perks to Patreon. You can just leave me a tip though, a super chat, a, a Streamlabs donation, uh, things like that. That that makes me keep producing content and knowing that people actually are uh, benefiting from this. So again, uh, I'm not going to try to put anything under paywall in the future. It's, it's I'm just not a fan of information being hid. Anyway, this, is, this has been... Kevin with Rogue Deck Builder. I'll keep you updated on other popper specs. There are still going to be some goodies. Uh, just keep looking at that popper metagame, especially when there's a new deck that hits. A lot of times you can invest in the cards that are, if you, uh, good rule of thumb is legacy, be, uh, back anything from legacy is very, very good specs because those, uh, those are all cards that are 15 years old at this point. And commons were not something that people kept uh, uh, put in binders and sleeves and things like that. So there's a lot of opportunity here. A uh, little bit of word of word of advice, though. You want to find a better outlet than TCG playing them because the fees will kill you. I have unfortunately wrecked a lot of these people. Uh, it doesn't get very profitable until you're around the five six dollar mark uh, because the fees will kill you at this point. So like this person, I bought four dollars and seventy cents worth uh, free shipping too. They're gonna have to tack on shipping. They're gonna have to then tack on. Um, the fee, the 50 cent fee that the TC player, and then the 11.5% fee. And that's really at that point, they're in, in for what shipping they've to send 10 cards. Maybe they got away with a couple stamps. There's a, a buck 50 right there. They're only, they're only netting like, and then the 11 point, there's another 40 cents. So they're only netting like two bucks out of this sale. So um, yeah, so over 50% of it got eaten up by fees. These poor, these poor schmucks that I did a, a $2 order with um, really got hit. Uh, because they they lose almost all of it on this transaction. So they have to actually ship this and then pay the 50 cents and then you know get hit by the fees still. And that just really, really takes it down. So find you want to trade these. Uh, there's Facebook pages that the MTG trade, buy, buy, sell, trade on Facebook that I've noticed there's a lot of people wanting popper cards. There's Cardsphere that's a great outlet. There's uh, even, even places like Puka Trade are, are places you could ship these off and avoid those fees. And that way uh, you just, you can trade these, these popper cards into then staples. We have people like, like Peter Twig, uh, Doug Montalvo on, on, on card sphere. They make an entire living off of, of basically trading up and then selling those cards. Um, uh, but you can also see another good way that I think is better than particular selling this is just wait till card kingdom has a good buy list and then buy list them all the card kingdom. And that way you make a lot more um, you know exactly what you're getting when you buy list the cards. Uh, you don't have to worry about the fees cutting into it. And you can set off a massive package uh, to them. So anyway, a little bit of advice for you if you are speculating a popper. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.